Hey guys, it's Johnny Tech Review. Today I have a quick unboxing and review for you of the Skylink home security system. This is a smart home security system that's designed to hook up into your Wi-Fi router and then you have various different components like the motion sensor, cameras and other door sensor and uh, they all work together and using an app you can monitor uh, arm and disarm the alarm. So you also get notification and uh, those are some of the standard features. So here I have the starter kit. This is the starter kit that come with these three different package. I also have some additional sensor. I will be using the uh, water leak sensor, uh, two additional door sensor. I believe the kit come with two of them and uh, I'm getting two more because I need more for the extra door in my house. So uh, we're going to be opening these up and see what comes inside of them. So let's start with the uh, main unit here. So let's look at the some information. So uh, some of the information in the unit you can see here. Arm disarm system, receive push notification, no money for your contract. Convenient arm disarm using the keychains, easy installation, uh, add up to 100 sensor. Uh, in case of power outage, you also have backup batteries, event log to store all your event history. Add up to 10 camera, this camera right here. Add outdoor solar sign for security purpose. You can also be connected during a power failure using an external telephone dialer. And all sensors are maintained by either AA or AAA battery. So a low maintenance cost and these sensors will see how long they last. So in this set, what we got is the internet hub, two door sensor, motion sensor, the uh, key change, and then we got some power, ethernet cable, and mounting accessory. So let's just go ahead and open this guy up first. Alright, up top here we have the user menu. Look like this one is in Spanish. There is the English version right here. Look like pretty easy pictures set up. I see here that is uh, iOS set up. I'll find out later if it's also Android supported. Look like power adapter and cable, mounting accessory and to the door sensor. Let's start with the internet hub. So here is the internet hub. Look pretty simple and dull. Nothing special. I will expect a screen or something but look like this is where the sign will go out. You got two light here for the ethernet and then the Wi-Fi and then four different uh, button here. I don't know what they're for. There's a lock button. Up top here we have the power and then the ethernet port. In the back we have mounting light. Look like here compartment for four AAA battery. Let's take a look at one of the uh, set of door sensor here. I have uh, four of these, so I have two here plus two additional one now. Actually, this looks like a key change. This is the fob for it. Look like batteries already doing. We're going to take that out later. So these look like the door sensor right here. Pretty simple standard door sensor. And then I have another set here. And then here we have the motion sensor. Pretty small motion sensor. It's kind of nice. I hope some of these come with uh, some mounting accessory like a uh, tape or something. So we'll have to check that out. Mounting accessory. Here we go. Yep, there are some double-sided 3M tapes along with some screw to mount everything. That's good. Let's check what's in here. Power adapter. Pretty simple. Power adapter. Look like Ethernet cable. So that's uh, set number one. Let's take a look at the wireless camera. So the wireless camera also has some uh, setup instruction here. Little user menu again. More apps set up. Pretty simple. I like the easy instruction step by step with pictures, power supply, cables, ethernet cable, screw, and then we have the camera itself here. Looks like a pretty standard small fixed camera. Here's a camera. Looks like you can rotate the uh, little eyes here to adjust focus. There's your infrared light for night vision. And in the back we got power port and then the ethernet port. We have another sensor here. Yes, it's another motion sensor. Some mounting stuff. And uh, pretty much the same sensor as that one right now. So another motion sensor. Alright guys, just a quick recap. Beside the three extra sensor, which I haven't opened yet, you have here the hub, the fob key, power supply for the hub, ethernet cable, you have the camera setup with the ethernet cable, two motion sensor, two door sensor, and then the mounting accessory, which are, consists of a bunch of different double-sided tape and some screw. That's basically the whole basic starter kit. You get all of these. I installed a network hub near the router downstairs near my TV in the living room. This is the app that you need. I just downloaded it. It's called Skylink Net. Go ahead and open it. The first time, you just have to set up an account. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and create an account at the bottom here. When you log inside, you have some option here. So I can go ahead and set up the hub. That's the first thing you need to do. Go ahead and uh, initialize the new hub. It's already doing that. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, Continue. 
So guys, after setting up the hub, all I had to do was uh, follow this instruction to reset. So after entering the IDs and uh, a password I created, the instruction here will ask you to reset the hub. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to continue now. Then they say I'm ready. So I'm good to go. So it says my setup is done. So now I just have to add some uh, cameras and sensor. Okay guys, I have the opportunity to use this Skylink security system for the past two and a half weeks or so. And I'm ready to give you guys an overall review of this product. Even though it's a simple product to use, you do have a lot of different components. And so I want to break it down to a few different areas. Uh, let's start with setup and then we'll show you how to add a device and then I'll go to the usage where I'll show you everyday usage of it using the apps, the sensor, the camera, etc. And then I want to point out some issues and then I'll wrap it up with some suggestions for the company to improve the product. So to set up this hub is quite simple. You just have to give it power and then also give it an ethernet connection. So that to me is probably a problem for some people. I know because you, your hub is not going to be near you. For me, my hub was in a different location, but I do have a switch and stuff running around my house. So I placed this device here in my living room where one of my switches, so I was able to connect to it directly. So after that, you do need to download the Skylink Net app here. And uh, the first time you use it, you do need to register for an account from them. And it's a pretty simple process, just you know, account, password, etc. Using that account, you can control multiple hubs. I think they say up to like 8 or 10 hubs, I can't remember. Uh, but you can control all those different hubs. Uh, so if you have multiple of these devices, either in the same or different location, you can control them all from that use one app here. So when you set up the hub, uh, you will have no sensor here, but uh, these are the ones I added already. However, I want to show you how to add the sensor. So we just have to go to more here. And then here you have some setting, so you can go to system setting for example, here you can add sensor. So we just go ahead and run the setup wizard. So from here you can add those uh, different sensors and it's quite simple for the door sensor and the motion sensor. It just matter of um, putting in the battery inside of it and then go through the process of adding and it will tell you to, you know, put the two sensors together and then it will activate the sensor. It's pretty simple. Since I already added most of my device, uh, the only thing I have left is the water sensor which uh, I can just move around. I'm going to put this near my water heater but I haven't done it yet so I have it out here. I want to show you guys that sensor right now. So here's the water sensor as you can see. This is the water sensing part and this is the uh, basically the transmitter and uh, most of the sensor will have this and also another part. Anyway, it comes with some mounting screws just like this. Very typical. So you get your screw, your drywall stud and then you have uh, some stickers you can stick them to if you want it. So this is basically your sensor. So first of all you need to put battery in them because that's how all these things work. Uh, the batteries they say are rated to last about 24 months uh, on normal usage so that's pretty good. Uh, this one here happened to use a triple A. Uh, so here I have a rechargeable triple A. I'm just gonna stick it in right here. As you see it come on it will bling just like that and it's pretty much ready. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this up. And normally if, with the other, some of the other sensors you do want to leave it open because you need to press the button in there. But for this one there's no button to press. The motion sensor had a button in there you had to press to learn it because there's no other part for, to trigger except the motion sensor part. So this one uh, it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and go to the process here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add a device. And then here we have a bunch of different sensors. So let's just pick sensor. And then here we have a water sensor for example. So the naming, uh, one thing I do want to point out, the naming, you cannot have space in here. I tried to do space and they get really mad at you. So I'm just going to call this water sensor. Just like that. And then location, basement. There you go. And then we're done and click continue. That's what's really nice about this. They'll have a short video or GIF here of each of the sensor and how to do it. And this one, they tell you exactly what to do. So uh, I have a cup of water here. All I have to do is just hit learn now. You can learn later, learn now. So go ahead and press learn now. And then it's waiting. And then all I have to do is just dip the sensor in here. And there you go, it's ready. That's all you have to do to activate it. And now I will have that new sensor down here, water sensor, you can see right now. So there is my new sensor. So you know, the idea is that you will mount you somewhere, uh, maybe on the floor or something like this, or you know, of your water heater. And then when if water flood your floor, it will connect the circuit and then it will trip it. So right now, I want to demonstrate to you. So I'm just going to dip this in right here. You can see, water sensor come on. There we go. It looked like it reset in about uh, 30 seconds or so. So that's how long it took to reset this sensor. Uh, same thing with the motion sensor. When you trip them, uh, they're not going to reset for 30 seconds or 40 seconds. So with the door sensor, as soon as you open and close them, they should reflect immediately, depending on how fast your connection is between your phone, the internet, and your home. But uh, for me, it was pretty much flawless most of the time. So as far as uh, setting up the camera, it's also very simple and the same process. You just uh, connect the camera and then can give it a uh, Ethernet cable. And then uh, you just use the app here, down here, and just add the camera. Uh, same exact way. So here in setting, you can do camera. And then you can add a camera just right here and you can add one. I have one right now already set up. But the idea there is uh, you add the camera and after that it will ask you if you want to make set up a Wi-Fi for your camera. So you enter your Wi-Fi 
information and uh, from that point on the camera will use the Wi-Fi and you can go ahead and disconnect the Ethernet cable from that point. Uh, I did have some trouble setting up the camera the first time I have a router that has dual band 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz and they both actually have separate SSID however um, with the 5 gigahertz on I was unable to connect my camera to the Wi-Fi it wouldn't find the Wi-Fi which was weird so I contact the company they just told me uh, disable your 5 gigahertz even though most people have the same SSID you have two separate SSID and I just disabled the 5 gigahertz anyway and it works after that I just re-enabled the 5 gigahertz and um, you know it's still working fine so I think it just for the first time for some reason uh, I have to disable the 5 gigahertz to get it working even though it's not even the same SSID so that was the camera I do want to show you what the camera looked like right here is I believe a 720p camera and right now as you can see it's dark down down so you can see it's a uh, have the uh, night mode on you have the infrared light automatically coming on it look pretty nice as you can see I go ahead and maximize it right here and this is what it look like so there is this camera this camera is a fixed camera there's no point to zoom in this camera so it's just a fixed camera but you do have the option to uh, take pictures and record videos and you can listen in the uh, mic is kind of horrible I'm gonna turn on the mic here so you can listen and that's why it sound like pretty horrible uh, I think when someone is talking, uh, it actually pick it up pretty good, but if there's no one talking, it's just quiet, that's the noise I'm getting. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. And you can also talk to it by just unlocking that button right now. And then the uh, recording or saving this app here, which you can unload and save it to your camera roll. Two more things I want to show you. Uh, this is the key fob for it. And this one come with the package, as you can see. And you have a few buttons here. This is to disarm. This is to arm while you're at home. And this is arm while you're away and then this is to set the panic these you just have to click to set them up and then this one you have to hold out for five seconds for it to trigger the panic button and you can see on the app you also have the opportunity to do those so you go to alarm here and in alarm you can uh, trigger those and you can even set up the panic and it's quite loud so that's pretty much the overview of the Skylink net system it's quite simple to set up uh, adding sensor it's not hard at all they have videos and instructions to show you how to do each of them customer support was pretty simple I asked the person and she just emailed me back and gave me the answer to most of my question it did took one or two days on uh, some of the issues but I did get resolved as for most system your system also has some flaw and I do want to point that out uh, first of all the sensor uh, most of the sensor they are supposedly rated for 600 feet in open environment but as you know most how it's never open environment you have always has wall and stuff so for me most of the sensor works fine my front door sensor which is about 30 feet away from the hub seems to be pretty good never really have much of an issues and then my uh, the only problem I have is my back door sensor that one is probably 60 70 feet away with three or four set of wall and uh, when I first set, set up the sensor I see the sensor get tripped when you open and close but that signal didn't get sent to my hub for some reason and I had to relearn the device a few times and after that it seems to work a little bit better so one in a while now it still doesn't go off or if it goes off it doesn't show that it's you know the door is closed after I close it that can contribute to uh, some wireless issues I do have a lot of wireless camera and stuff set up in the house so it could cause some interference because I think when the signal is tripped it sends a bus a signal out to the hub and the hub didn't get it and miss it that's basically what happened another thing to consider is that the battery you make sure you want to use fresh battery good batteries if you have problem with those I suggest trying the new batteries and see if that help. Another thing I want to point out is each of these sensors here, uh, you can actually go in there and turn the cham on and off for them. What that means is when it get tripped, it will make a noise. And the noise is basically teet teet. It's only one noise and it's kind of loud. And I wish that you, in, you know, in this day and age with smartphone and all these uh, different options, I would figure that they will give you a, a few different cham to pick from. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound that complicated. Maybe the hub need to be a little bit updated to you know produce some different ringtone or something but that's the only noise you get so I, I would love to have different sensor to make different noise so my front door can go tit tit and my back door can go to something like that so I would know the different that would be nice the other thing which is quite annoying these are the sensor I have this is the exact order that I add them there seem to be no way currently for me to really reorganize them they're stuck like this the only thing I can do is go in here and I can add a group and in a group I can add sensor into them but even then I'm pretty much stuck. Uh, there's not really any real organization. That's one thing I didn't see uh, much in here. Uh, next thing, cameras. You click on camera, you have to wait for a few seconds for the camera to load up. This is perfectly normal to me. However, if you don't have a camera connection, let's say your camera is down for whatever reason, you'll be stuck here for about 10 to 15 seconds before you can even switch around. Uh, so if you accidentally hit that camera button, you have to wait 10 seconds. The app pretty much frees up while it's waiting. I think that would be an improvement to make the app more responsive while that's happening so you, you're not locked into them. 
Other than that, the arm and this arm seem to work pretty well. If you have good internet connection, uh, if you're on LTE, for example, outside the house, as soon as the sensor is stripped, you get the message right away. There's notification. Everything is really nice. I do want to point out one more thing in the sensor here. You do have a lot of options. You can rename them and you can delete them. You can relearn them. You can turn on push a notification for each of them. Uh, as you see here so you do have a lot of options there so it's quite nice last like most good system now you do want to have some kind of automation and when your system you do have that you go to setting you have if and then setting right here as you can see if and then in here you can actually do stuff like you know set up stuff like if your sensor trip then do that to the other sensor one thing I want to do is set if the front door is trip then activate the camera that seems to be not an option here uh, I asked the company they say that's not an option right now and uh, you can do other things like let's say the front door is trip turn on the light yeah, that's a possible option you can get uh, one of those light switch uh, if the hub is panic you can have the system bring the light flash the light turn it on and off you can do all that but you can uh, play with the camera right now the camera seems to be not really integrated into this as good as sh it should be but I think that's just a matter of software here so overall it's a pretty nice system for about 200 bucks you're getting this thing right here you're getting some sensor uh, you're getting the hub not the phone obviously the app and then a motion sensor and you also get an additional motion sensor and a camera for that price so to me that's a pretty nice price for a starter package one camera is already set up for about 200 bucks and you know typically if you go out and you ask someone to install a security system for you it's gonna be a little bit more pricey maybe it's a little more reliable maybe they're wired but that, that can be really pricey so if you go to wireless option you can pretty much expect 500 600 dollar and you know that's we're talking about uh, no monitoring fees up here I think each additional sensor is between $19 to $25 so adding each additional sensor it's quite cheap so you can have a lot more doors let's say you have 20 doors to your house you can add each of them you can add 10 more sensor and that will cost you just about 250 bucks so it's not really that expensive and you know with more sensor with more setup you can do a lot of cool thing with it you have other stuff like light switch which I don't have to review for this package but I probably have to get some of those to give it a try in the future the uh, wireless camera I do want to point out this wireless camera here is about $90 it's a fixed wireless camera it's okay pretty good but you know I at this price point I kinda expect point to zoom they do have that option but it costs a lot more than that so that's pretty much my review for the Skylink net security system uh, the app do have a lot more options which I didn't go to completely but I kinda give you an overview so if you have any questions just let me know down in the comment down and I'll try to answer them for you and I hope you uh, enjoyed this review and hope it helped you in your purchase decision and uh, remember to subscribe for more future videos thank you